We have two teams at the top of the Scottish Premiership table. Two teams that are involved in a title fight. Two teams that have been damn near perfect. But before we can talk about Celtic and Aberdeen, first of all, we have to talk about the real number two, and that is League Two. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. I know nobody really likes talking about League Two, but here... It's the bottom of the pyramid. It's like the Klingon of the Scottish uh, pyramid, the Scottish league setup. We have to talk about it. It might be right at the bottom, but, uh, you know, we need to show it some love. It's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. So let's get straight into it. Uh, Bonnie Rigrose defeated Elgin City by two goals, 10 0. Good for them. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I think I predicted Elgin City to win. Got it wrong. And then East Fife lost 2-1 at home against Stranraer. So the top two teams in this league lost this week, which is surprising. But maybe that will open things up. Edinburgh City, I got this right. I said Edinburgh City would defeat Clyde. They have defeated Clyde. And now Edinburgh City, I know it's still early days. I know we're not even a half the way through the season or whatnot. But Edinburgh City beginning to look like a team that can stay up, and everyone assumed they were down, everybody thought we wouldn't see them again, they were going back out of the pyramid, but we are an important win here, they're putting a bit of distance between themselves and the teams at the bottom, Spartans defeated 4-4 by 3 goals, 10-0, and in their final game, Peterhead defeated Sterling Albion by 3 goals to 2, which I think I got as well, I'm pretty sure I say it's Peterhead, 3 goals to 2, and if I did, that is an amazing prediction. That is some scoreline. But I definitely got this one right. Edinburgh City won. Clyde now. I'm impressed. I'm happy with that. I'm proud of myself. Anyway, here is the league table. And Peterhead have leapfrogged both East Fife and Elgin City. They've went from third up to first. 24 points. Now it's very tight at the top. One point separates three teams. You've got Sterling Albion, the, the chasing team in fourth. And then Edinburgh City now into sixth. They are best of the rest in the bottom half of the table with Clyde and Forfar at the bottom on nine points each. I know it's early days. I know it's only a third of the way through and it's only a six-point gap, but it's an important lead that Edinburgh City have. And, I mean, you look at their goal difference as well. Their goal difference is decent. So Edinburgh City, a lot of people had them written off at the start of the season. Maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to do enough to stay up. Moving into League One then, it was Queen of the South 1, Alloa Athletic 1. We had Annan Athletic 1, Stenhouse Muir 1, lots of 1-1s one here. Cove Rangers 1, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 2. Could be a scoreline that saves Inverness. I know it's early days, but Inverness needed to get wins from somewhere. Come the end of the season, if we do get a revival, if we do get a comeback from Inverness Caledonian Thistle, Maybe this could be what it started because the last thing they needed was to go on a really bad run and for that gap that they find themselves behind the other teams to get even bigger. So this was an important win and they got it. Also helped by the fact that Kelty Harps beat Dumbarton. And I believe I got that prediction right. Uh, at least one Harps won this weekend. And Montrose won. Our Broth won. And that means the League One table looks like this. Aloha top. Cove Rangers, who, I mean, should be top, but lost, I guess, to Inverness. Bad result for them. But it's very close now. I mean, still nine points separates the top nine teams. If you want to go even closer than that, three points separates the top six, or four points separates the top seven. Inverness, though, with that win, they are now in plus points. So they've got rather the negative. They're back on board, and they are 11 points behind Dumbarton. Can Inverness do it? I think so. I think they're decent. I think that we could see Inverness get back and survive in League One. And I hope they do, because administration is tough, and I just don't think this 15-point deduction is a good idea. The team's already hampered. The club is already hampered. Why double punish them, you know? It makes no sense to me, guys, but whatever. I wasn't the one that decided it. Right, Falkirk 2, Airdrieonians nil. I think in this match we're looking at the winners of the championship and I think we're looking at the relegated side of the championship. For me, 
Falkirk will be first. Airdrie will be 10th come the end of the season. That is what it's looking like. Hamilton won. Livingston 3 at the said LX Stadium. Stevie May, Lewis Smith and Andy Winter getting the goals for Livy. An important one that Livy needed in order to try and stay in touch with Airdrie. Important victory. Partick Thistle won. Rafe Rovers won. Just a draw there in the middle of the table. Brian Graham gave Partick an early lead. But Dylan Easton scored as we approached the final quarter of that match. Queen's Park 2, Dunfermline Athletic 1. Uh, again, I think I got this correct in my prediction. Dunfermline, just not a good team. They are struggling and they might be saved by the fact that Airdrie are so bad. But still, wouldn't be surprised if we see Dunfermline have to be in a relegation playoff. And who knows? Well, some of the teams are playing well in League One, so I don't think there's any guarantee Dunfermline would survive that. And uh, last but not least, on Friday night, we'd Greenock Morton 1, Air United 1. More drop points for Air United. And if we look at the league table, that means that Air United now find themselves 10 points behind Falkirk, which is crazy, because Air United started the season so well, and a lot of people were tipping them, possibly too early. I think some people jumped the gun, but they were tipping Air to go on and become... Maybe not become champions, but at least they were tipping them to, you know, be right up there and and probably be favourites at that point. But now that's no longer the case, and they're level now on points with Queens Park. They're only two points in front of Partick Thistle. And I remember it wasn't that long ago we looked at the table and we thought that the top three were kind of like in their own category. That Falkirk, Levy, and Ayr were kind of running away from everyone else and that there was only one playoff position, you know, left to play for. But you look at it now, and Air United have been caught. They've been caught by Queen's Park. They're only two in front of Partick Thistle. And if they keep playing the way they're playing, I wouldn't be surprised if they get caught by Hamilton and Rafe Rovers as well. But at the bottom, Dunfermline stay on nine points and Airdrionians stay on five points with that minus 20 goal difference. That's effectively another point at this stage of the season, because I don't see that getting overturned. So yeah, Airdrie really struggling right now, and they need something to change. But we're now going to go into the Premiership, and listen, could try and get Big Stevie Cool on the line, but earlier he was pretty much drunk, he wasn't making much sense, he was even more illiterate than he normally is, so I don't think we'll be getting him tonight. I think he's retired. Big Stevie Cool is a... Uh, He's had too much of the, the, the cool stuff, so he's going to he's gonna pass it tonight. He's going to take a pass on this. And I don't think he really wants to talk about it because it was another really poor performance for Rangers at Ibrox. I mean, they got the win, another 1-0 win, but how many games are Rangers going to sneak by? How many games are Rangers going to defeat their opponents by a narrow scoreline of one goal to nil and just survive and just manage to claw their way to three points? We're not seeing Rangers put teams to the sword. We're not seeing impressive performances where Rangers are comfortably beating sides. We're seeing Rangers, it feels like, week in, week out, just struggling, just holding on to these one-goal wins in order to keep Clabon in a job. It is kind of crazy. Cyril Dessels gave Rangers the lead in the first half, six minutes in. Rangers thought started okay, but, I mean, after that... Especially in the second half, they didn't really offer anything. Hearts had a couple of good opportunities, one that hit the post, and I think Hearts probably did enough, I think, to maybe get a draw. It wasn't a great performance for Hearts, but again, it just goes to show you that you don't need to be great anymore. You can be average and turn up and almost get a result at Ibrox. Back in the day, if you were average at Ibrox, you, you would get pummeled, you would get smashed. You had to turn up and be great at Ibrox just to get a half-decent scoreline. But now we're seeing teams turn up at Ibrox, not even play well, and, and coming close to getting something. So it says a lot about Rangers. But yeah, they got the win there, 48,000 in attendance. I mean, it didn't look that packed out, and the Rangers fans were leaving pretty early as well when I was watching the game. So uh, yeah, just I don't think they're happy, not a good few. And it's a win, and that's the important thing. They needed that. Going into the international break, but it wasn't a good win, you know. It's just a, it's just a win, a win at the end of the day. Kamarnik nil, Celtic two at Rugby Park. Really good performance for Kamarnik. I know a lot of people are not happy that I've said Kamarnik were unlucky, but guess what? Kamarnik were unlucky. 
most people that are non-biased, most neutrals, watched this game and thought that Kilmarnock were worthy of a point. Casper uh, Smeichel was awarded man of the match. What does that tell you? That tells you that he had to pull off quite a lot of good saves in order to keep the clean sheet and give Celtic the win. So maybe try taking the green tinted specks off. Kilmarnock were really good today and I think they deserved more than what they got at this game. And what they got at this game in the end was nothing. A 2-0 win for Celtic. Fortunate goal by Cal McGregor. Definitely a cross into the box. Nobody gets nothing on it. Either tries, he doesn't get anything on it. And McCrory just lets the ball go into the back of the net. Not good for him. Other than that, though, McCrory had a really good game. So uh, disappointing for him to concede this goal on the brink of half time. But Casper Smeichel, for me, man of the match, definitely pulled off some really, really good saves. And we haven't seen him tested that much, especially domestically. He had a couple, of, I mean, even the Aberdeen game. You know, he, he had a couple of saves to make, but Aberdeen, they got their two goals, but it's not like... They, they, Aberdeen didn't create as many chances uh, in direct shots at target as Kilmarnock did today. And we have, even the only game I think Casper's uh, probably faced more shots would be the Dortmund game. Even at Atlanta, even RB Leipzig, Smeichel didn't have that many shots to face in those games. But today, he was, I mean, he was under the caution. I mean, he stepped up big time. He proved that whether he's got the slippers on or the slippers off, you know, he can he can make saves. And I think that he is the best goalkeeper in the league for me. Uh, when, when Celtic got this guy in a free transfer, man, I looked at it and I thought, wow, that, that's a great signing. Yeah, I get it. He's a bit older now. He's 38. But for a goalkeeper, I mean, it's not even that old. We could get Casper Schmeichel. Casper Schmeichel could still be around playing in the Scottish Premiership at, at this kind of level. For another three, four seasons, you know, goalkeepers can play into their 40s now. It's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, he was great today. So fair play to him. Because I know that he has received a bit of criticism. Not necessarily because he's been bad. But because a lot of people are saying he's the best at this, the best at that. And he's not had a lot to do. And people are saying that, yeah, it's easy to keep clean sheets when you're the goalkeeper at Celtic. And sometimes that is true, but today, Casper Smeichel earned that clean sheet 100% because he made a lot of good saves in this game. And uh, Derek McKinnis not happy about a few things. There was a potential red card for Hitate. Uh, I can see it 50-50. I can see why it wasn't given, and I can, I can certainly see why it would be given. But Derek McKinnis, strangely enough, didn't think it was a red, so... There you go. Derek McKinnis, though, he was unhappy about some other things in the game, and I think there's a separate video to come on that. But no, the red card for Hitati, Derek McInnes actually thought the referee got it right. So, I um, mean, it's, it's nice to see opposition managers and opposition, um, you know, people from the other clubs not obviously wearing their tinted specs all the time. So Derek McInnes there calling out, uh, calling it the, the the yellow card as being the correct decision, which was kind of cool. Uh, Aberdeen 4, done D1. Didn't think it was a great performance for Aberdeen. Simon Murray missed a penalty in the first half. Had he got that penalty, I'm not convinced Aberdeen win because the first half was poor and Dundee would have had something to hold on to. But second half, changes were made. Dundee were not great from their set pieces and Aberdeen via a corner, via a free kick and via a throw-in managed to get three goals before Kevin Nisbet put the icing on top of the cake in the 97th minute. Simon Murray did score a good header from a, a great Tiffany cross, but... It wasn't enough. Dundee in the end only getting a consolation goal. And Aberdeen with a great 4-1 victory at Pitodre. Tanadice seen Dundee United defeat Ross County by three goals 10 L. And honestly, man, only that's a poor attendance for me. The Dundee United fans should be packing out Tanadice. They're playing some really good stuff at the moment. You know, well inside the top six. Looking comfortable. They have a seven-point lead over their rivals, Dundee, who are the nearest team outside the top six. Plus, you know, they've got much better goal difference than Dundee. So, for me, I think the Dundee fans should be be turning out in, in greater numbers. I think that's pretty poor. But uh, John Beaton was the referee. It was a convincing win, nothing controversial. Dundee United being victorious, scoring three goals and collecting three points. Hibernian won, St Mirren two. Uh, some penalty shouts in this game, some given, some not. Martin Boyle, really poor penalty. Nicky Caden, though, in the 94th minute, pretty much hit the same penalty, but because his went in, it looked pretty good. We did have the new signing, Connor McMenamin, 
getting two goals in his debut in this game. The Northern Irish man, I believe he was signed from Glen Torren for 75k, so he's going well towards repaying that in this game. But 15,500 here turning up East of the Road, and uh, Hibs fans don't deserve this, man. They don't deserve to be watching their team get beat week in, week out. It's embarrassing. It's not good enough. And David Gray is still in a job, but honestly, for how much longer? How how long can this go on? If you're going to sack somebody, it's the perfect time to do it. It's the international break. It gives you two weeks now to get a replacement. But I think David Gray will survive. I think he's probably one or two more bad results away from getting the plug pulled on him. But right now, I think that he will be the manager when the football returns after hopefully Scotland pump both Croatia and uh, with the other team that we're playing, whose name is completely just forgot. Poland, aye, Poland, aye. We'll pump Poland, they bother. And then in the last game at Fur Park, Mullerwell 2, St Johnston 1, uh, Masha Wanshi and Tom Sparrow getting the goals for well. The Steel men... Nicky Clark got a consolation in the 58th minute. At the time, though, it wasn't a consolation because it gave St. Johnson a way back into the game and St. Johnson looked like they could potentially get something out of it, but it wasn't to be, and Mullerwell held on for a 2-1 victory in the end. So now, let's look at the league table. This is what we all want to see, and it is Celtic at the top, leading the way. 11 played and they've got 10 wins with just that one draw, that one little blimp coming against Aberdeen. But so did Aberdeen. They also have that one draw in there as well. And obviously their draw came against Celtic. Now, Aberdeen have really good home form. Seven wins out of seven. However, I mean, does that mean that Celtic have got the better start? Celtic have played less home games than Aberdeen. Celtic have played two less home games, whereas Celtic have had to play two more away games. So you could argue... That makes Celtic's, you know, position in the league slightly better since technically if you're playing away from home, it's a tougher game. But Aberdeen will turn around and say, well, the one game that they played each other was at Celtic Park and Aberdeen avoided defeating that. So, I mean, both teams have got strong claims to who is truly, you know, ahead. But for me, Celtic are top because they have the better goal difference. In fact, they have double the amount of goal difference as Aberdeen do. So, I mean, you can argue who, which position you would rather be in, but for me, Celtic still massive favourites, still the team to beat, and they will be the champions come the end of the season. No disrespect to Aberdeen. I think Aberdeen will push them, and Aberdeen could finish second, but I still, I'm, I still don't see a title challenge. I don't. But right now, it's there. You can't deny it. But come match day 38, I'd be lying if I said I think Aberdeen will be in with a chance. I think Aberdeen can finish relatively close. I think they can push Aber I think they can push Celtic and finish within 10 points, definitely. I think Aberdeen will get to the split and they'll still have a mathematical chance. But do I see them getting to the final day or the final couple of days in with a shout? Honestly, I don't, but I hope they prove me wrong. Rangers in third place, three points in front of Dundee United and Mullerwell. Uh, you got United and Mullerwell in fourth and fifth. St Mirren now in to the top six after that win against Hibernian. Dundee in seventh, Kilmarnock stay in eighth, Ross County now in ninth, St Johnston in tenth. And at the bottom, you have the Edinburgh clubs. Very embarrassing. Hearts in 11th, Hibernian in 12th, simply not good enough for the capital clubs, and it really is a shame uh, from both that they're, they're this poor. The, the hearts and Hibs should be a lot better than this. If you want Scottish football to be great, if you want a strong Scottish Premiership, you need your big clubs to be at their best. You need your big teams to be pushing above and beyond. And look at what Aberdeen are doing. Why can't Hearts and Hibs be doing that? You know, it's it's such a shame that. And you tend to notice that it is very rare in Scotland that the, the three biggest teams outside of the old firm, it's very rare that all three go through good periods at the same time. If you notice, it always seems to be one, or maybe at the most two. But mostly it's just one team that seems to do well at one time. You never really seem to see you never really seem to see the three of them like, you know, pushing on at the same time. And and it's disappointing. But right now they're at the bottom there. And I think Neil Critchley will be happy that Hibernian are struggling so much or else I believe there would be pressure on him already because 
yeah, he came in and got a couple of results straight away, but you know, since then, results have kind of dried up, and uh, Hearts find, find themselves 11th, and that's simply not good enough. Anyway, that's it, guys. We will catch you in the next one. It's been the SPFL Review Show. Lots of videos to come tomorrow. Got to look at fan reaction. Got to look at Chris Boyd. And he is irate over the red card that wasn't given to Atate. We've had Derek McInnes come out. And he's been angered by Celtic fans. He's had uh, some bad words to say about them as well. So lots of stuff to talk about tomorrow. But as we go into the international break... It's still the way it was coming into this weekend. It is Celtic leading the way, but Aberdeen chasing them right behind. Anyway, guys, that's it. Leave a like, comment. I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.